following recent changes in the legal world, I'm here today to discuss the effect that these have on businesses and the benefits to be gained from them. I'm joined by Angus Glow, a barrister, who will help explain some of these changes. Angus, as I understand it, it's now possible to go directly to a barrister. Yes, Claire, you're right. Traditionally, of course, if you had a problem or a new concern, or needed some advice, you would go to your solicitor, whether you be a business or, or an individual, and your solicitor would then consider the case and, if necessary, then refer to the barrister. The regulations have now changed so that businesses and individuals can go directly to the barrister to get an answer to a particular problem, question or seek some advice. How do the services offered by a barrister differ to those offered by a solicitor? Well, I think people would traditionally think of a barrister as well as a wigging gown, but it shouldn't be seen in such terms. Of course, barristers are experts in particular fields, and so, of course, they don't need to just draft uh, documents. Uh, they can also offer a wide range of advice. And I would say that's really where the expertise and specialism lies. It's in what the barrister does on a day-to-day -day basis. Angus, could you give a few examples of what a barrister is now allowed to do? What I would say is this. I want to answer this question, Claire, in two ways. I want to give some sort of bullet points as to what barristers can now do and really bring that to life in how it impacts and manifests itself uh, in the day-to-day -day running of businesses for people that may be watching this particular video. So what I want to say first of all is that clearly barristers can offer legal advice, they can draft documents, letters, um, draft witness statements, um, they can offer advice as to the formal steps required, they can also identify as so need be experts, but how does that impact on a day-to-day -day level for your for businesses? Well, it means this, that if a business has a contractual issue, whether it supplies the goods not being paid for them, whether it itself has received the goods but they're not fit for purpose, whether it's in, involved in some dispute over some uh, construction matter, whether it's involved in a personal injury matter, something may have happened at work, it may be a health and safety matter, it may be a partnership issue. It may be an employment issue. In these straightened times, companies are looking at reducing staff members. And they may, in fact, find themselves before an employment tribunal. But it shouldn't be seen in such strict terms as only contacting a barrister when there are problems and when litigation is actually pending. So there's the option of contacting barristers to avoid litigation. And so we touch on the employment matter. Of course, if there were considered redundancies, uh, you could look at possibly putting together a compromise agreement. And when we talked to the contractual issues earlier, uh, of finding a way of, of recovering that money owed uh, to a particular company, or of finding some remedy for some goods which have been supplied to you, which really weren't up to the specification you're expecting. So as I say, I, I don't think companies should be one-dimensional and rigid in their thinking. They've now got an option of approaching barristers which simply didn't exist beforehand. What work is a barrister not allowed to do? Well, uh, uh, to do public access work, the barrister's got to weigh up whether it uh, is relevant or suitable to be dealt with um, by public access and dealing with the case on his own. Uh, and one thing that barristers aren't allowed to do at the moment is to issue proceedings, hold client money, or undertake any formal steps in the sort of furtherance of the litigation. Uh, so those are the areas that barristers can't do. But what I would say is if anyone had any doubts as to what barristers can and can't do in the new regime, uh, I would contact the Bar Council or have a look on the Bar Council website. Um, but there's uh, good information there as to what they can and can't do. Is it possible for you, a barrister, to waive the restrictions on the work you're able to undertake? No. Can I instruct a barrister via direct access when I've already instructed a solicitor? Curious question, um, but I understand uh, the, uh, the reason behind it. It may well be that somebody has approached a solicitor, instructed them, but for whatever reason doesn't feel the case is progressing or getting the advice that they seek. There's nothing to stop them then from directly contacting a barrister under this public access scheme. Can a barrister stop acting after they've accepted instructions? The barrister should weigh up whether a case is suitable to be dealt with on the public access basis and they've got to keep that under constant review. If they feel actually the case of looking at it or because the developments has got too serious or too complex, 
and they feel that it's not in the interest of the client, the case, or just in the interest of justice for it to be dealt with on a public access basis. The actual barrister is obliged at that point uh, to contact it to see if a solicitor is going to come on board. So Angus, in short, businesses can now get help and assistance quickly and directly from a specialist barrister without the necessity of first going through a solicitor. Claire, yeah, and what I've tried to get across today is simply this, is that businesses up and down the country now have an option which simply didn't